Freshwater, coastal, and big game offshore fishing is amazing here, but even those resources are threatened. The erosion of our coast reduces the breeding and feeding grounds available to these fish, and ultimately, the number of these fish. There was a time when, for me, coastal erosion was like an hour hand on a clock. You only really noticed it if you looked away long enough. Now there are signs of its impact on a daily basis. Mother Nature is suffering, and often, it can be hard to watch. You know, this is one of the best examples of erosion that I can show you out here. I'm talking about the, the ship that's out repairing some of the damaged oil field. And this reef used to be one connected island. And now there's about eight feet of water and a quarter of a mile expanse between the two. And, and the edge of this island where a lot of birds came to hatch their, their babies each year is now such a shallow reef. The little guys like this get washed off on a regular basis. Stone Island was once a large shell-based island, one of the largest of hundreds of the islands in the Delacroix and Black Bay area. The island supported oil exploration, was a favorite stop for anglers, and a large breeding rookery for many wading birds. Now, the birds used to using this land to protect their young from predators face a new danger. We're in a pretty strong tide right now, about a two-foot range of just under. And what's happening is that water comes up, it's literally washing the eggs and the young birds right off of these islands. It's once were big rookers. These young seagulls were literally being washed off of the island. The tide was close to turning and lowering, making a decision to take the babies difficult. Four of the baby birds actually left the island swimming for the boat. If left in the water, they would have surely drowned. So I scooped them up and placed them in a makeshift nest, the anchor rope. The good news was these young gulls were not shy and readily ate our bait shrimp. They fished with us the rest of the day happy to be on board, and by the time we had them packed and ready for delivery to the Audubon Zoo, they were looking much happier and much healthier. Like the young birds returned to health, our marshes can have a similar experience. Scientists are clear there are ways to restore much of our lost habitat. What we have to do is reconnect the coastal marshes with the river again. We've essentially cut it off and put it in a channel. We need to make that connection again and let it re-nourish the system. But the river alone won't solve the problem. Interestingly enough, one of the state's main causes of coastal erosion may now offer a solution. If we use the river, it's going to take decades and decades to get it back. We can perhaps kickstart that process a bit if we use some of our other skills to move the process along faster. We're great at dredging in this country. We're actually great at dredging in South Louisiana. We've done a lot of it, some of it not necessarily good in the past. But now we have real skills in that. We can move sediment from one location to another and we can kick start that land building process. The price you pay for fuel, the cost of shipping goods through most of the country, the seafood you eat, the birds you watch, and one of the nation's largest environmental treasures are all threatened by coastal erosion, no matter where you live. For Louisiana residents, properties, professions, and lives suffer with annual coastal losses. And if you're like me, Watching the environment suffer, the land disappear, and the wildlife and fisheries threatened is no easy task. Coastal erosion played a large part in the nation's largest natural disaster. And while you may not have lost everything you own or someone you love, it is likely that Louisiana's missing marsh grass is affecting you now. And if ignored, will cost us all a lot more.